<laughs> hey folks, this week, I'm putting it to you. Everything that you think I know that you don't know, you can know. And you can know more than I know. So, you know, go get in the know. Come on, folks, let's get catified, you know? This is all about due diligence. What I'd like to talk to you today about is empowering yourself but with knowledge. I want to start this episode by telling you a story about uh, my cat, Rabbi. He died at seven years old, and he died of diabetes. It tore me up inside for years. I didn't do my research into the connection between nutrition and diabetes, and what cats need to eat. Now, if you know me now, you know that that's a big soapbox that I stand on. If I would have known that back then, Rabbi might have lived twice as long as he did. Now at the time, the doc knew no better, and, and this is of course, I'm not saying anything bad about my vet back then or any vet at all, but uh, he immediately put him on insulin and put him on a prescription diabetes diet food. And in very quick succession, Rabbi went downhill. And that, people, should not have happened. But it did. And one of the reasons it did was because I just said, well, the doctor says this, so it must be. Back then, I was lacking one big tool that you guys have, and that's called the internet. If you're told of a diagnosis, and it was your body, if someone said, you know, Jackson, you have diabetes, What's the first thing I'm going to do? I'm probably going to find out everything that I can about diabetes in order to make myself better. I mean, maybe there's something out there that my doctor didn't know about. Maybe by scouring the internet, going onto support groups, uh, I can find out if someone else has figured out something that will help right the ship in my time of need. The same approach needs to go for your cat. Due diligence is power, people. Another example, I'll never forget one of my earliest experiences with due diligence. It's a story of me and my friend Benny the Cat, and I go on the internet, and again, this was uh, at a younger time in the internet age, but I still found a video clip of somebody's cat doing the same thing that Benny was doing. And I go, oh, it's asthma. My cat has asthma. Now I have a track to follow. Now I have a word to put to this awful thing I'm seeing happen to my cat. And, and that is what led down the line to me employing things like acupuncture for my cat. It's because somebody like you left a note on a forum. It was a website called Fritz the Brave saying, oh my God, guys, I just tried acupuncture for my cat's asthma and it worked. You gotta try it. I tried it and it worked. Now, did that mean that I abandoned ship on his medication? Of course not, that would have been insane. But at the same time, I gave him some relief based on what his own body could do for him. That led me into all types of therapies. This is called a, a holistic approach. Th th we have this huge tree with fruit on it, and we can pick fruit from this tree. It doesn't matter whether it's conventional fruit or organic fruit, uh, or, or whether it's flower essences, or, or whether it's physical therapy. I, you know, what I'm saying is, use the whole tree. And the only way I believe that you can use that whole tree is by you investing your time into your cat's physical and emotional well-being. In the course of My Cat From Hell, I have had the unbelievable pleasure of working with guardians who learn things about their cats. We have seen uh, feline hyperesthesia syndrome, pica, diabetes, cancer, chemical imbalances, arthritis, kidney disease. Uh, we, we've even seen stroke that was misdiagnosed. And, and these are things that because they're put out there in the public, they are now taking the lead in educating others about. And that is how we get a responsible world of pet guardianship. So let's be clear what I'm talking about here. I'm not saying to ignore the advice of your veterinarian. Remember, it's a diagnosis, it's advice. It is not, and they will be the first to tell you this, the, the final word. 
The final word comes from you. You have to take responsibility for the well-being of the animals in your life, just as you would take responsibility for your well-being or your children's well-being. I want you to arm yourself with the knowledge that is available to you, and I am telling you, I am learning stuff every single day. And all we have to do is be willing and available uh, to digest this information. Your homework, whatever is going on with your cat, dive on in there. Just go wading in the waters of the internet to find solutions, to find support, and, and to help others out. That's really important, folks. The second thing is, don't X anything out. If you're dealing with a, with a cat that has any disease, don't do anything that's detrimental to your cat, like take them off medications in order to give them flower essences, for instance. But use these things together. It's the nature of holism. We have so much available to us. All you have to do is dive in. That's what I got this time, man. Of course, this is my opinion. I am not a vet. Got to put that out there. I'm just a guy who has spent a lot of years reading about cats, watching cats, hanging out with cats, loving on cats. All right, folks, you can find me on all types of social media, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, oh my. And you can tell me all the things that you have found about your cats that have saved their lives. Please, hashtag Team Cat Mojo. This is important stuff, folks. Your due diligence can save a lot of lives. Please do it. Until next time, all light, all love, all mojo to you. Mwah. I love you. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm not a bad cat. You're a bad cat. I'm just misunderstood. Meow. Yeah.